there was the understanding that perhaps the normal fabric of American life was also needing to be corrected. Not just economic, economic inequality, but the way, in fact, we were living. And you saw movements like the commune movement, where people, in fact, tried to emulate things like the kibbutzim in Israel. And in Vermont, they're probably at a certain period in the 60s, I would say, in Vermont right here, there were probably a dozen communes, land which was sometimes, uh, depending on, on particular situations, communally owned. People were trying to farm it, trying to raise kids in a communal way, experiments with new ways of living. Uh, you saw explosions in almost every area of academic life. Right now, we're in a conservative period. Academics are basically very conservative. But at that point, for example, in the whole area of psychiatry, and Rick is, is, of course, a psychologist, there was a new movement called um, uh, radical therapy. All right, questioning, questioning, for example, the whole definition of mental illness. Who in God's name is mental, mentally ill? Is it not mentally ill to go off in a stupid war and kill somebody and get yourself killed? And there are people, you know, so the whole issue of even sanity versus insanity. And that got kind of mixed up because you had some really crazy people like Charlie Manson and his friend <laughs> were posing as love human beings while they're going out murdering people. And there was, a, a, needless to say, a little bit of, of confusion in that. So you had also a lot of very heavy politics going on. You had revolution, revolution in the air. But it wasn't just revolution. It was cultural revolution. And you had in city after city very horrendous battles between young people uh, and, and, and police, very bitter struggles. Uh, and you had, I think, as I reflect, and you know, constantly what one is thinking about, what's the relationship of the 60s to what's happening right now? And certainly one of the things that one understands, I think, and it's a point that I'll probably talk about more later, is the relationship between young people and the issues that they talked about and moderate income people and working people. Very important issue, which, which we get into at some other period. Because after all is said and done, what we should remember that out of the 60s, Richard Nixon was elected president in 1968. He won a landslide in 1972. And despite the fact that he was involved in Watergate and almost went to jail, the Republican Party came within a hair of, of winning in 1976. And some of you may know who's president of the United States today. <laughs> and what is the relationship between all of that activity that I'm talking about over here and the reality of what has happened here? Who was involved? All of these things that I'm talking about. How did it affect? the average man and woman who were not involved in this process. And if you talk about the need to make social change, how do you do it politically? What is the relationship between radical activity and working people and elderly people? And I think certainly one of the problems that has gone on for many years in the left movement today is that there has been that separation. Okay. Now also during this period, phenomenal things were happening around the world, not only in the United States of America. Some of you may or may not know that in 68, I think it was, there was almost a revolution in France. Not just a word revolution. Boy, it was a revolution. There was almost an overthrow of the French government. Charles de Gaulle, who was president at the time, was busy running around to Germany and other NATO countries in order to make sure he had the troops to put down what they expected to be a revolution in France. That workers and students, that workers and students were working together by the hundreds and thousands and millions who were prepared, prepared to make demands on the French government, which actively would have made the overthrow of the French government, uh, quite a possibility. Okay. Um, you, I haven't yet you know, put together in my own mind uh, what comes out of the 60s. I mean, what, what's, what's left, what was important, what was good, uh, what was not good. I think one of the things that one, one sees as one gets old and we get old is you look back and you see sometimes the superficiality of it and sometimes not. You see people who I can remember, guys whose hairs were down to their backs they were just so ever so radical, my goodness. Nothing was, was too radical for them who are now conservative lawyers, uh, conservative business people. And you understand that for many people, things happen in a faddish type way. Everybody is doing it, why not me? I'll become a revolutionary this week too. It's the in thing to be. Okay. And certainly uh, there was a lot of that. On the other hand, I think what you also can see now is that people who lived through the 60s uh, in many ways learned a great deal about the world that they live in, developed a very strong sense of commitment, which many people have kept uh, for many, many years. And it manifested itself all over, all over the country uh, today. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll stop at that point and, and maybe accept some questions and, and 
go off there. Don't be shy.